hear this kid go to another kid, this just really isn't that fun. And the response was, yeah, I know. She really should have made this more fun. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Caffeinated Classroom. I am Marie and I am a high school English teacher in Southern California and it has been a minute since I filmed a legit sit down YouTube video in my home office. So welcome back you guys. Cheers. At the beginning of this school year for me was and has been a freaking dead sprint. <laughs> like I hit the ground running the week before school started mid-August and I have just been like chugging through until now. It is mid-September and I finally feel like I can come up for air. Our first grading period ends this coming week and so I got all my grading done this week and I am feeling pretty on top of things. And I wanted to have a little coffee chat with you guys because it's been a little bit since we've done that. You know, we just sit down, old friends, chit chat over a cup, over a mug. I'm not gonna tell you if this is my second or third cup of coffee of the day, but I think you can probably guess. Those of you who have been here for a minute, you know. Anyways, today I want to talk to you about something that came up in my classroom this week, but that I've thought about many times over the course of my career and what I'm sure I am positive many, if not all of you have thought about at least a handful of times, probably this year alone. And that is today, I would like to debunk the myth of the teacher clown. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. This all comes back to this this past Tuesday. I had my kiddos, my 10th graders, but I still call them my kiddos, doing some learning stations that I set up to introduce our Lord of the Flies unit. We are reading Lord of the Flies by William Golding, the novel about boys who crash land on an island and they're the only ones that survive. Many things come out of it. It's a microcosm of society. Here we go. So I set up these learning stations to introduce themes in the novel, to introduce some historical um, and social context to the novel, a little background on William Golding, the author, and some of the vocabulary. So I, I had six stations around the room set up so that they could just kind of like understand before they really got into reading this book where these things are coming from and like what war sparked these ideas, etc. So. First, first class comes in, they know what to do because they've done stations with me before. It's how we did our very first day of school. And they know that they're gonna be moving around to different parts of the room every 10 minutes or so when the timer goes off and that if they're not finished, they'll just finish at home because I post everything online. And they just go through all the little activities. And <laughs> I, I heard little rumblings of this during first period, but it didn't really spark bark anything in my head. And I think it's because I was just kind of trying to make sure everything was like working and all the links were good and whatever. Um, but second period is coming through and I'm hearing just little rumblings about, oh man, oh, this is hard. Oh, I thought this was going to be fun. Oh, there's only one game. And then like I hear this kid go to another kid, this just really isn't that fun. And the response was, yeah, I know. She really should have made this more fun. And I didn't say anything to the kids. I just kind of like went to my seat and I sat down for a minute and I wrote down the whole little exchange. Just this really isn't that fun. Yeah, I know she should have made this more fun because my, my initial reaction was one of indignation. I was like, I should have made this more fun for you while you're learning about themes having to do with little boys killing each other. Like that should have been more fun. I didn't because obviously that's a very extreme reaction. <laughs> I sat down and I thought about it. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw my story this last Tuesday because I just sat there and I was like, I am not your clown, kids. I am your teacher. There is no such thing as a teacher clown. A teacher clown is not educating. A teacher clown is entertaining. And I just, it really just got my brain going this whole entire week. I've been thinking about this. I've been talking about it to some of my colleagues. I've been talking about it to my husband who is also a teacher. And just trying to figure out exactly where the idea comes from with our students, sometimes with their parents, sometimes even amongst colleagues, or among administrators, other teachers, um, other educators, why the idea is that all things in education must be fun in order to be engaging. The whole idea, there's a, there's a term coined called edutainment, where basically things things, lessons, must be 
entertaining, in order to be engaging, in order to be educational. And I wholly disagree. And I have to like take this side note. I am very much a student-centered teacher. I want kids to inquire. I want them to be interested. I want them to lead the charge when it comes to their education because I just very much know in my core that if they are not engaged and if they are if they don't have a buy-in, they're not really going to learn much from me, especially at the secondary level, especially in English language arts, where we're teaching such big, huge concepts and we're teaching writing and reading critically and um, kids need to like be there with us and they need to try back. So all of this is to get at, I sat down and I actually looked up the words, the verbs, engage and entertain. And let me just tell you what they say. We'll do entertain first. To entertain, a verb, to provide someone with amusement or enjoyment. To provide someone with amusement or enjoyment. Okay, now let's look at to engage. To engage is a verb and it is to occupy, attract, or involve someone's interest or attention. So on one hand, to entertain, making things simply fun, is to provide something that is snappy and entertaining, that creates an interest, but it's something that's provided that is just face value, it is a one-way street, it is me to student, I am doing the dog and pony show, I am the teacher clown, and I am making it fun for them. On the flip side of that is to engage, which is to attract the interest of someone else, to attract, to pull in. It becomes then a two-way street. I am doing something to attract them into being interested. I'm attracting them into involving themselves within whatever it is that I'm trying to teach. It is now becoming a bit of a mission of mine to try and really define that for my students and to say, listen, yes, it is my job to create lessons that are engaging. Sometimes engagement will be so fun. Sometimes that hook and that game and that activity that we're doing to try and spark your interest will be entertaining. But the only way that that spark of interest will burn into a flame of inquiry will be if you engage back. Like, just because I have something that's engaging doesn't mean that a student is going to learn from it. It has to be a two-way street and students need to push back and try and engage. I always tell kids that you have to, by law, you have to be in this classroom. Like, you have to be at school a certain amount of your day for a certain amount of years of your life why not get something out of it, right? So that is me trying to incentivize for them to engage back, to let go of that apathy. And the teenage years are rife with struggle, emotionally and otherwise, and every day is not going to be like a knock it out of the park kind of a day, but I just, my job is not to entertain. My job is to teach and to educate, and I will educate through engagement. And sometimes that engagement will be entertaining, but it also needs to be engaging. It needs to be involving. It needs to um, bring kids in and not just have me spewing information and saying, yay, yay, look at this shiny object. <laughs> Do you like it? Don't you want to learn about it? Because truly, to teach and to learn are two completely different verbs, right? I can teach till I'm blue in the face. It doesn't mean anybody's learning anything. It has to be a contract between myself and my students that they are going to be actively learning from what I am teaching. So I know for a fact that many of you have thoughts on this already and that all of you will have thoughts on this by the time I'm done talking. So please, please, please leave a comment down below. Let's start a discussion here. Let's look at helping each other define and be okay with sometimes an engaging lesson can be boring for kids. That's fine. That means they are allowing themselves to be bored. Sometimes it is not my fault if I have a great and engaging and interesting lesson that sparks inquiry and that misses the mark for a few kids because those kids are not willing to engage. It is not all on them, but it is also not all on me. <laughs> and I am giving myself that license to know that what I'm creating is quality and know that kids who will engage are going to be very interested and are going to get a lot out of these lessons. And kids who just don't want to engage aren't going to for whatever that reason is. And I will find other ways to try and reach those students. 
but it's just not going to be with glitter and sparkles and things that are just fun and entertaining because that's not necessarily true education. So, cheers. Those are my thoughts for this morning. I hope you all have a wonderful week that is coming up, and I hope that hopefully this maybe makes you feel a little bit better if you're looking at your lesson plans down the line and saying, well, I don't have a whole lot of fun. Yeah, but do you have things that are engaging? Because it's also their job to try. I look forward to seeing your comments on this. Please connect with me on Instagram. I'm on there daily, and I love talking to you guys and hearing what other educators have to say. If you are not on Instagram and you are an educator or on Twitter even, I'm not that active on Twitter, I would like to be. But if you are not on the social media, you are missing an amazing jackpot of information, of professional development, of encouragement, of ideas and inspiration. Get yourself on there, okay? Do yourself a favor. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you next time. Make sure to subscribe. You never know when I'll do another video again, hopefully soon. Okay, bye.